So did you see the full screen? Sorry? Did you see the full screen? It's OK? Yeah, yeah, that's good. OK. So thank you very much, uh, Frédéric. So I will talk about uh, our work so at University of Bordeaux, but also at University of Tokyo in Japan, as I stay the last four years at, uh, at Tokyo. And I just came back at the uh, University of Bordeaux since uh, September. So our main goal, so in the both location, we are still uh, working together, is to design some uh, spiking neural network. But I will explain to uh, you so what means biomimetic spiking neural network and uh, the different systems that we try to, to use and to design. It's a real time closed loop, so bio hybrid system. So I will uh, define after the, this different world. So just uh, one slide before for Bordeaux. So uh, just if some people would like to do some research here, some PhD, some postdoc, or some uh, sabbatical years, please come to Bordeaux. There is good wine, good food, there is beach, there is a nice building. So if you want to visit, uh, please, uh, please tell me. So about the content of the talk, so I will uh, begin with the context and then I will explain uh, what are our digital spiking neural networks. So in fact, we work on the digital spiking neural network in digital hardware platform. So before at Universal Bordeaux, especially with the team of uh, Sylvie Renault, uh, they work on the analog uh, neural network, so in ASIC, but now we uh, change and we, we, uh, we are going on digital. And then I will uh, show the different biohybrid experiment that uh, we performed. So in the world, there is a million of people so affected by neurological disorders. And so the main issue is that uh, a lot of patients are drug resistant. So how to try to design some system to, uh, to work on this neurological disorder. So in fact, the good thing is that there is some advance in biophysical interface in the last recent years, but also on artificial neurons. And uh, I will try to put uh, the point here. And in the brain, so all is from neuron. So I just not put just one cell, uh, cell body that usual for artificial neuron, but there is a cell body, there is an axon, there is a dendrite, there is a synapses at the axon terminals. And uh, from this, there is neural network. And this, from this neural network, you have a network of neural network and, uh, to, um, to design uh, the brain. So there is different techniques to analyze and to interface uh, these uh, new real neurons. So there is microfluidic interface, there is a nano interface. Then for the network level, it's a more micro electrode array. So we'll uh, talk a bit uh, later also about this. And if you want to uh, interface directly with the brain, it's more brain slice of, uh, or MRI or EG signal. And there is, uh, in the last recent years also, there is a very uh, less, uh, high improvement in artificial neurons. And so there is an the idea of electrostatic therapy. So in fact, for patients who couldn't, uh, where the drug are very resistant. So there is this new field and uh, there is a nature paper who focus a lot on this field. So in, uh, I put the paper in the 2013 and 2014. And so we try to stand some adaptive stimulation. So to try to recover the dynamic of the neural network. So our team are working on two things, our biomimetic neural network. So in fact, when I talk about biomimetic, so as you can see here, is to try to replicate the action potential of biological neurons. So to be at the closest of possible of biology. So it's not artificial neurons uh, that we use, for instance, usually in uh, artificial intelligence, where it's just uh, one, uh, one threshold and one spike. So here we try to mimic the ionic conductance and to replicate the biological uh, network, also the multi-compartmental level. And uh, all of these we implement in real time in some FPGA. So for instance here, you have uh, one FPGA board. And the second axis of our research is a bio hybrid system. So we try to make some bidirectional communication between the living cells here and the artificial cells. And we try to see uh, some result, and I will uh, show you later about it. And for instance, if you want to see about the macro array, here is a macro array. So it's a matrix of uh, micro electrodes. And you make the neuron culture on it, and you can uh, record and stimulate from this uh, interface. So to try to design this bioabrity system, in fact, you need a lot of pluridisciplinary team. So there are some people who work more in mathematics. So about, for instance, the wavelet filters for the 
uh, spiking detection, about the different neuronal model, so I will talk about it, about also some optimization algorithm so to try to tune our system and to find the, the best parameters. There is people in physics, of course, for the interface between biology and the physics. So there is a neural probes. You need some analog processes to, to remove the noise and to try to extend the signal to nozzle ratio for the biological uh, signal. And uh, you have also microfluidic here. And in biology, so we work in three different parts. So you have the in vitro part, so where we have neuronal culture. We work also on the ex vivo, for instance, on spinal cord. And uh, so for my part, we don't work still in vivo, so we just begin about it, but there is also in vivo part, uh, especially on what. And all of this, you need to try to design some real-time closed-loop system for biology physics interface. So our research starts, so in fact, is uh, quite a long time ago. So uh, for instance, in 2002, there is uh, this publication in Nature from uh, Professor Le Masson and uh, Professor Renault. So they are at University of Bordeaux. And they succeed to make uh, one of the first uh, bio-hybrid system with uh, one biological neurons with a patch clamp technique and one artificial network, uh, one artificial neuron, sorry, not network, just one artificial neuron. And they do the communication, bidirectional communication between both. And now what we try to perform is to extend this work at a higher level. So not working just in one biological neurons, but to work on network of biological neurons. So not in batch clamp also, but more uh, other interface. And using not just one artificial neuron, but a network of uh, artificial neurons, so some spiking your network. And the main goal is to try to mimic, of course, but try to replace the living part using this hardware spiking network. So these are a bit uh, schematic about the bio system, so what you need about blocks. So BNN means biological neural network, so the real uh, biological neurons. ANN is an artificial network. So you have uh, your biological network who have some dynamic, and this dynamic, you can record it and stimulate it thanks to electrode. So you need some uh, system to, to extend the signal. And here you have your artificial network who also have uh, one dynamic, and uh, I will explain later, but the main goal is to try to make the communication between both, in the both sense, of course, so bidirectional, and to try to communicate and change some dynamic. So this is, uh, so I already explained a bit, but about what is the difference between bio-inspired and biomimetic. So there is a lot of work of bio-inspired, so it's usually is more for engineering tasks, so to, to make some pattern recognition, some data mining, some artificial intelligence. And what we are trying to doing is more biomimetic, so it's to be the closest as possible to the biological. And for two main goals, is to try to understand, of course, the living behavior, but to try to replace also the living part. So what are the requirements for designing this kind of system? So it's very important for the neuron model. So you have the action potential of one neuron, and you have two main characteristics, is the frequency of spike and the shape of spike. So usually people are more working on frequency, but we try to work on frequency, but also on the shape. So frequency, you try to, uh, to check uh, the different model and what from one simulation, what is the frequency of answer. But also we try to replicate the shape of action potential because uh, most of most uh, biologists things that the shape also have a signal processing information in the neuron uh, transmission. So we try to be closest at the biological part. So of course, as you try to be the closest, the number of neurons that you will design is a bit low. So we are more designing thousand of neurons instead of millions of neurons. So you have people who are more working on a simple model, but for millions of neurons, and our part is more thousand. And uh, in fact, this two research will have to uh, communicate and we find the best uh, trade-off and uh, to understand the local neural network and uh, also the, the network of net neural network. So what is very important also is to work in biological time scale. So why? Because as we design some bio hybrid system, you need to communicate and interface at the same time. And so you should be uh, have an answer and a, a step of computation under one millisecond. Even 100 microseconds is better because it's a time of a, of a synaptic dynamic, for instance. So if you can make your spiking neural network work at this time, so like that you can interface with biological system. And 
So I talk about the neural model, but also there is a lot of different biometric options that we try to implement as a synapse, the axonal delay, some plasticity, the short term and the long term plasticity, and also the synaptic noise. So I will explain a bit later about that. So now I will uh, uh, focus on the digital spiking networks on the hardware part and how we design it. So for all the application, you need to find what is the best neural model and what is the neural model that fits best the application that you want to perform. So you really have to think about it and to choose what is the best neural, neural model. So you have a lot of models. So you have a simple one, so integrated in fire, for instance, leaky integrated in fire. So you just have two or four parameters to tune to, to have the, the a neural dynamic. You have some very complex neural, uh, neural model like oxygenoscale with multi-compartmental conductance based neural model. So you have more than 15 parameters. And after you have some trade-off like Izikevich, Fils, Nagdemo, or Maurice Lecar. So like that, you have less parameters, but you can have a very nice logical meaning. So here is uh, one figure from Izikevich. And uh, he, um, he classifies the different neural model from the, his implementation cost and the biological plausibility. So more you are here, more you are close to the biological, and more you are here, more it's very complex to implement. So it's in the flop, so it's for digital uh, hardware implementation. And uh, so you can see that oxygen is the most complex, but the most closest to the biological, and the integrated fire is uh, the easiest one to implement, but quite far from biological. So you have also Izikiewicz here, but uh, in fact, to be honest, uh, it's uh, Izikiewicz figure. And in fact, uh, this point is not very here, it's more here. So uh, it's a good model is quite good, but it's not uh, as good as uh, this figure shown. So we already implement in our FPGA different neural models. We implement the Oxygenus model. So we'll talk uh, uh, more about it because it's the last uh, model that we implement. We also work on the Izikiewicz model because uh, there is a lot of uh, cortical models that you can reproduce thanks to this model. And this model is very easy to implement in a digital hardware, especially in FPGA. You have also one model who is close from Izikiewicz, but Izikiewicz, uh, so if you check later in details, you have a power of two in the equation and two will put a power of four, so it's a bit more closest to the biological dynamic. And there is a professor, uh, the model of uh, Professor Takashi Kono for University of Tokyo. So he's a mathematician, he's also a, a, a doctor. And he, uh, he, his uh, hobbies is electronic. <laughs> so in fact, he, uh, and he loves artificial neurons. So he succeeded to, to design one model with very quite nice because he, um, the equations are not so complex, a bit like Izikiewicz, but you are very close to the biological meaning. So the only drawback is the tuning was a bit complex. So you need some meta heuristic algorithm to make a good tuning to find the good parameters to, uh, to replicate the biological dynamic. So for instance, here is also from an Izikiewicz figure, but you have a lot of different neurons in the biological. So this is our cortical neurons. So you have some uh, um, excitatory neurons. You have also some inhibitory neurons. And we try to replicate all this kind of family of neurons because all of them have, uh, are, have some key uh, point for some uh, signal processing. So all of this, of course, you can reproduce just by a, a bit complex model, at least Izikiewicz or, or LEAF model, but from the antigen fire, you couldn't reproduce this kind of activity. So then we implement our spiking neural network in FPGA. So the FPGA board, so I think you know what is it, is a digital, uh, uh, it's a digital electronics. So you have a platform and you have a matrix of transistor and you make the connection to, um, thanks to a programming language with, which is a VHDL or a H, um, Verilog, sorry. So usually in US you use Verilog, in Europe you are more using the VHDL, but it's quite uh, similar. And the advantage of FPGA is that all, uh, you can make a lot of parallel tasks. And for neurons, it's quite nice. So like that, we implement one neuron for one core. And so we can make a lot of parallel neuron computation. And in that case, after, uh, makes a, a build the topology and makes a, this neural network working together. So it can work in real time, thanks to uh, the parallel computation. And uh, it's in supervised our model and we work at the biological scale. So to, to make, to, uh, to improve the best of the implementation, so we work with a pipeline implementation. So that means that we try to maximize the parallel computation. 
and it's using a very few resources. For instance, the small FPGA that I showed you before, we can implement all of uh, our auction screen your network, so more than 15,000 neurons, just on this small FPGA. So it's quite interesting when you do biohybrid experiments because you are usually in magical lab and you need a small place. So it's very uh, easy to, uh, to bring it in different lab and to perform the experiment. And on our system, so we implement 1,000 EZKH neuron with 30,000 synapses. And for Oceanus Clay, we implement uh, 1,500 um, fast packing neuron. And if we want to implement all the different cortical uh, family, so we have 500 neuron, but just for one core. And so if you have a um, FPGA with a, not the best one, but a good one, so you can multiply this number by 20 or 40. So here, just uh, so I didn't want it to, to go in the technical details for the implementation. So if later you have a question, so of course uh, I will answer, but I uh, was not sure about the uh, audience of this presentation. So I'm not going to the detail, but just to explain how we do all the parallel computation. So we use pipelines, so we use a lot of parameters in memory. So this, thanks to the interface from PC, we send the parameters to the FPGA. Then we compute the ionic channel. So as we use Oxynos Clay model, so you have ionic conductance. So we perform the ionic condition computation thanks to this and thanks to the earlier method for the differential equation. And then all of these computations are stored in some uh, RAM inside the FPGA. And we can make the computation of the final equation for the membrane voltage and for the synapses. So still using the earlier computation and using uh, adding and uh, shifting of, uh, of different parameters to perform all the computation. And the time uh, step of the computation is 100 microseconds. So here to, uh, to show you the, some results. So I uh, show you the different cortical neuron models. So you have the fast spiking, you have the regular spiking, intercellular bursting, and low threshold spiking. And we always compare our other results. So uh, the red one that we have in FPGA. So it's from a digital scope. So uh, thanks to also a digital to analog uh, converter. And we compare always our signal to the biological recording. So here we uh, start from post uh, is uh, meaning that we start from one publication of uh, post uh, So they make some uh, patch clamp technique to, uh, to classify the different uh, cortical neurons. And we compare the biological data thanks to our um, implementation. So we have the same uh, membrane voltage, we have the same timing. And to be sure that uh, it's working also when we increase the simulation that is very important. So we have to check also uh, the firing curve. So what is meaning that we check the frequency of neuron answer compared to the stimulation that we inject. For the fast packing, as you see, it's always per it's a periodic, so it's quite easy to make the, uh, these curves. And for the regular packing, you see that you have a high activity, and then after you have a time before adaptation, and after you have a lower frequency. So to compare this, we have to fit the first spike, but also the frequency after 10 spike. So we always do this uh, methodology to validate that we have the shape, we have the frequency, and also we make a study of uh, bifurcation analysis to be sure that we have the same dynamic. So about the results, so compared to the state of the art, this uh, implementation of exchange clean FPGA is quite efficient. So we have a, a high number of neurons in just one core. So we work at 100 frequency for the FPGA, and we are not using a, a very expensive FPGA. It's just a one. Uh, it's just a 600 euro FPGA, so it's a very average FPGA. So we, you can increase this uh, this result using a better FPGA. So we wanted to show that uh, this implementation could be improved also if you want, and uh, you can embed it in very small FPGA and very low price FPGA if you want to perform for more biological lab, so perform a lot of experiments using this artificial network. So we implement also some synapses. So synapses, as we uh, make complex neuron model, we need to have also complex synapses. If not, uh, it's not worth to, to use a complex model if you use very simple synapses. So we implement the four main synapses that you can find in the body. So it's uh, the different uh, GAB, GABA I, GABA B um, here synapses, and also AMPA uh, receptor and NMDA receptor. So we implement these different kinds of synapses. And after, when you construct your neural network, you choose which neuron you want, which family, and which synapses, and how many synapses are connected to this neuron. 
And to improve more the biometric part, we also add some synaptic noise. Because if you don't use noise, you can see here, you will always have a periodic neural activity. And this in biology, you would never have this. So you have more, as you can see here, some spontaneous activity because you are in a noisy environment, especially in vivo environment, but also in vitro environment, you have a lot of noise, extracellular noise. And this noise uh, will change a bit the dynamic of neurons. So thanks to uh, uh, work from uh, Alan Destex, uh, so he's quite famous in neurocomputational sciences. So we designed a model of uh, synaptic noise and we implement this noise inside our FPGA. So like that, this, in fact, this figure B is a FPGA answer also from the, our digital scope. We also add the axonal delay. So like that, you have the time of processing depending uh, the topology that you want to construct and the distance of the different network. So what is quite interesting, for instance, you can construct some pyramidal, pyramidal structure or some 3D structure because you have one, for instance, neural network with a lot of neurons close to each other, but after you have this neural network which is connected to another neural network. And for this communication, you need some time delay. And this is uh, due to axonal delay. So we implement also this to, to go better, to, the, to go higher to the biometric level. So after designing all of this, so you finish your spiking neural network implementation in FPGA. So then there is a second step to work is to try to create some library of different spiking neural network with different characteristics. So in fact, we construct a library of different artificial networks. So for instance, here I'll just show some example of 20 uh, artificial network. And we classify them because usually in biologic, um, biological study, we classify more of this depending on the burst so uh, network burst inside. So what is a burst of network? Is when you have, for instance, 100 neurons. If during 10 milliseconds, you have at least 10 neurons who are spiking at the same time, so we consider that it's a network burst. So that means that nearly all the neurons are synchronized and you have what we call a burst. So we classify this by tuning some parameters depending on the number of bursts by minute you can have. We classify also, but I didn't show you here to don't show too much detail, but of the frequency of spontaneous activity. And after, uh, you can construct a lot of different neural networks. And I will show you why also we do this library, because we work from this library to perform the biology system to use the best spiking neural network who fit at the biological characteristics that we are studying. So for instance, if you want to reproduce a uh, very no mature neuronal culture, for instance, just one week after um, primary uh, neuron culture. So here to explain, for instance, here you have the number uh, neuron one, two neuron 100. So you have 100 neurons implemented. So this is uh, the FPGA neurons. So we should just show the raster plot. So the raster plot, if you don't know what is it, it just, we put one point when we have one activity, when we have one spike. So depending time, if there is one one who's packing, we put one point. And so the point is a blue or, or green. And this is in a real time. So, um, just uh, okay. Okay. So you see on real time, so you have some uh, spontaneous activities. That means that some neurons are packing, but not very uh, conscious. And here you can see one burst. So that means that there is synchronization of all the neurons. And so in non-mature neurons, you have very few bursts. And this is also what reproduce, uh, what reproduce this topology of neurons. But just changing some parameters, and we, uh, for instance, we have also some different library. So you can have a more synchronous activity. For instance, if you have a three weeks neuronal culture, you usually have nearly no spontaneous activity, but a lot of bursts. And here, as you can see here, you have nearly just burst activity and very few sometimes here you have a bit few spontaneous activity but it's nearly just burst and so like that depending of the activity of the neuron culture the biological one that you have and uh, by checking the burst activity and the sponsor activity you can choose what is uh, what are the spiking neural network that is fit the best to try to mimic or to replace this biological activity. So I show you the two extremes. So the one very non mature, the, the most mature one, but just to, to explain you uh, how, how we work. Sorry, Timothy, which, uh, yeah. 
which animals are you taking the cells from? Is it from rats or mice? Yeah, so in fact, uh, usually uh, most of them is from mouse or from rat. So it's uh, E17, uh, so it's from fetus. Uh, so it's a primary neurons of rat and, uh, and the mouse. But also recently, uh, we use a stem cell. So human stem cell, and after we can uh, replicate them uh, as a neuron or also from organoid. So I will show you in the last experiment, but uh, we use also brain organoid of a stem cell, of human stem cell. But all the experiment that we'll show with the bio system is more with the mouse of rat uh, neuron culture. Is it okay? Yeah, thank you, sorry. Um, so then when you, you design your spike neural network, so it's okay, you have your neurons, you have your synapse, you have all the different options, but you have to make the topology of one neuron so to try to replicate something. So we start for the locomotion neural network. So like that, it's not so complex. So to, to be sure to use it before going to more cortical neural network we have more complex. So the locomotion of animals is based using on CPG. So CPG is a central pattern generator. And you can reproduce different activities. So the locomotion, the breathing, and, uh, and also the heart. Uh, and there is a different animal from this, the salamander, the lamprey, or the leash. And from this, in fact, in Bordeaux, we have a lot of uh, lamprey. So it's a beautiful animal with beautiful face. But in fact, in Bordeaux, so we are a bit uh, barbary in France, but it's quite nice. So if you want to work uh, to eat it in Bordeaux, so it's a uh, lamproie la Bordelaise. It's quite famous. It's uh, in a wine sauce. So the face is not good, but the uh, taste is good. But this animal is not just good for food, but uh, it's uh, in fact, the neural network of this animal is quite easy to model. And uh, he, um, we replicate the locomotion and the heartbeat neural network of the lamprey. And so like that, we can reproduce some uh, biometric CPG and trying to use it for other stuff that we'll show you later. So this is the model of the leash of the lamprey heartbeat neural network. So here you have two, uh, so this is biological data. Uh, we we'll put again the... Yeah, so you have two biological uh, neurons. So you see the oscillation, and uh, inside the oscillation, inside the burst, you have a lot of uh, different spikes. And so to model this, you can use just two artificial uh, neurons. So this means uh, as a, it's a, um, as a elemental oscillatory. But you can also make a bit more complex just with eight neurons and 12 inhibitory synapses. So it's excitatory neurons with inhibitory synapses. And you can reproduce exactly the lamprey of bit neural network. So we validate in blue is a biological data that we have, and in black is a FPGA data. So with the good tuning, we can replicate the CPG. And what is very interesting, because you can see that this seems to be just an oscillator, but in fact, this oscillator is a biological oscillator. And what is interesting is that you have some variability. And this variability in nature is quite important. So you're not just one oscillation every time at the same frequency, but you have a bit variability. And thanks to this neural model, you can also replicate the variability that you have in biology in FPGA. So it's quite interesting. And also inside, you have a mean spike frequency. That means that the spike frequency are not the same. And this is quite important also for the simulation that we send. So we can replicate also these curves of the change of spike frequency. And so to make this CPG, so we add the short-term plasticity. So that means that if you have a lot of stimulation in one synapse, after the synapses will begin to be tired and they will be less efficient. So this we implement also this, uh, this model, so this equation in FPGA to replicate uh, this behavior. So of course, this CPG could be configurable. So depending on the parameters, you can change the frequency. You can change also the DT cycle. So it's quite important, the DT cycle, if you want to make some robot also. So for PWM motor, for example, to control uh, this kind of, uh, of motor. And so you can uh, modify in real time the different activity of the CPG. And so this real time is quite important if you want to do also some uh, robotic application, also bio-hybrid application. So thanks to this CPG, I will uh, show you after two applications that we, we, make, we perform. And we do also this CPG with the oxygenous clay model. So you can see that uh, with oxygenous clay model and uh, the CPG, we can implement just in this very small FPGA. So it's quite efficiency in the power consumption and the resources that we use. 
So here you have a focus of the of the CPG. So you can see more that inside you have the, the spiking activity, and you can change also the frequency uh, depending on this. And from this, so we, we uh, wanted to do some bio hybrid robotic. So you have the artificial intelligence, the artificial CPG, we will control the robot. So instead of doing some, uh, usually you have uh, one uh, biological brain which control a robot, artificial robot. And what we wanted to do is opposite. We have an artificial brain and we want to control biological sensor and activators. So thanks to that, you can do some multi, uh, multi cellular culture with neurons and with uh, axon bundles, so like that you have like the muscle. And it's a biometric CPG who send the stimulation to the neuron, so to the motor neurons, who will uh, send some stimulation to the, axon, to the axon bundle for the muscle behavior. And you can make a network of CPG, so like that you can make some forward uh, locomotion or backward locomotion. If you change the DT cycle, you can uh, go to left or go to right. And this also, we work in Tokyo about it uh, using a microfluidic system. So all of this is in microfluidic, and you have a small chip, uh, electrical chip, where there is a CPG inside, and we control the microfluidic chamber, sending some air pressure, so like that you have a deformation in microfluidic. So I can talk about this later if you have any question. And this is an example of uh, one robot that we perform. So this is a snake robot. So there is a, a lot of different uh, wagons, and uh, each wagon corresponds to one part of the spinal cord. And one, every spinal cord has a CPG signal who is uh, uh, sending from the brain here, so from the brain we send to the spinal cord information. Uh, so you can see that the snake robot is moving a bit like a uh, so the, from the CPG, so it can go to the left, go to the left. We uh, add some uh, sensor, infrared sensor, so like that if there is obstacle, you can see and uh, it modifies his uh, CPG information and so go to more to the left or go to the right. So just to show that uh, also some biometric uh, neural network can be used for some robotic application and to try to replicate some uh, biological uh, locomotion. So now I will uh, show and explain a bit some uh, bio-hybrid experiments that we perform thanks to these different spiking neural networks that we implement. And for instance, I will start from an ex vivo uh, um, application. So to explain you how we use uh, this uh, CPG, uh, uh, FPG. So in fact, this is a spinal cord of a rat. So uh, it's a fetus of rat. And, uh, I will put again the laser one. Okay. So here you have the recording uh, pipette so to check the biological uh, information. And this is the spinal cord. So we, before we record the activity. So like that, we have an idea of what activities uh, there is inside the spinal cord of what. Then we make a lesion here. So of course, after this lesion, no information can go through uh, this spinal cord. So here you have nothing. So we still have the recording, but we have we add some uh, stimulation fork. And this stimulation fork will be controlled by the uh, FPGA, by the SNN, by the CPG SNN. So in fact, the CPG, thanks to this recording information, will uh, model and replicate the signal, and we will send the signal to the spinal cord here, and after we check if we recover the activity. So here is a neuromorphic board. So here you have the FPGA inside, so we have the CPG inside it. Here is, in fact, is the input of the microelectrode array uh, interface. So you have this, your uh, spinal cord here, you have your signal, and we send all the input data here. You have the spike detection, and then after we send to the CPG, we send some stimulation to this fork uh, here. And what is quite interesting that uh, uh, this is L5, L5, and L2. L2 is uh, the recording uh, electrode here. And before the lesion is a gray signal. So you see one oscillation like that was before the lesion. And after the lesion, of course, you have nothing. But thanks to this bridge application, so we try to make a bridge thanks to the artificial device. So we can see the oscillation here. And here also. So you can see that the oscillation in amplitude is less. So that means that we succeed to recover a bit the activities that before, 
but not com fully completely. So in fact, there is a lot of different uh, possibility because uh, when we do the lesion, there is a lot of damage inside also the neural network. So it's never easy also to recover the activity because you damage a lot because of this lesion. And also it was our preliminary experiment. So about the stimulation intensity, uh, we were not sure about uh, the, the required stimulation that we performed. But we could uh, reconstruct this oscillation uh, thanks to the artificial CPG that you have here. And then I will explain uh, so um, experiment, a bio-bit experiment, so this time in cortical neurons, and we try to do a replacement experiment. So what it means? So in fact, uh, this work was from one European project that uh, we work with uh, Michela Chiappalone at IIT in Italy, with uh, Paolo Bonifazzi that at this time was at University of Tel Aviv, and uh, Paolo Massoblio who was at University of Genoa and me at University of Bordeaux. So you start from four clusters of biological neurons. So they are cultured on some different macro array. So you can see your four clusters. We send some stimulation and we check what are the characteristics of the biological network. So like that, you have an idea of the function transfer of this network. Then the second step is to remove one biological cluster. So like that, you damage the whole neural network. And of course, at the end, you don't have the same answer from the same stimulation that before. And the main goal of this project, and I will show you the result that we have, is to replace this damaged neuron culture by the artificial one, and to try to come back to the initial dynamic that before the lesion. So here is some, uh, so you, there is one uh, e-science publication so last year, so, but these figures are not from this publication because I wanted to show the, the, the neuron uh, image from the directly from the, the scope, not from the scope, so, sorry, from the microscope. So here you see the four clusters that uh, we, uh, we culture. So you can see that there is connection from here. Here there is some connection and here some connection. So when is connected like that, there is no connection here. So we send some stimulation from the two here and we check what is the influence to this cluster. So when we send simulation here, that means that there is signal processing from here to the two to the one, then two to the one to the four, and the four to the third. And we check what is the change of modification in the third neural network compared that we, if we didn't see, we didn't send some simulation here. So you, we, uh, we make some correlation uh, computation. And so like that, we can check what is the influence of the simulation in two to the third. So the second step, we cut by laser. So you can see here, there is a laser cut of the connection. So the number one now is independent and we stimulate the second one and we check if there is influence here. So if I come back just before, when is blue light, that means that there is high influence. If it's dark blue, that means that there is no influence. And so when we cut, when we send the same simulation, we check on the third and we are in dark blue, that means that there is no change on the neural dynamics. So there is no influence from this simulation to the number four. So then there is a part of our work. So we study well this cluster one. We make all the biological characteristics, the number of bursts, the, uh, the density of neurons, the connectivity of neurons, the spontaneous activity. And then we choose in our library, the Spike Neuron Network, the one who fits the best to this characterization. And then after choosing this, we put an FPGA and we replace this biological network by our artificial network. And then when we send the simulation on two, so we go to the uh, artificial network, we go to the four and the four go to the third, and we are coming back to a light blue. So that means that there is an influence from thanks to this, and we are nearly recover the same um, dynamic that before in terms of burst and, of, um, and also in the spontaneous activity. So this was quite interesting, uh, but also a bit like in the spinal cord. So the recovery was quite nice, but not, as, uh, as we have in the preliminary um, characteristic before the lesion, because even for the uh, laser lesion here, you still have some damage in the neural network. So now I will uh, show, so it's a non-published uh, work, 
but uh, it's very, very interesting. So we try now to do some bioabit systems, a closed loop experiment, but not to replace the, uh, the biological uh, network, but to try to modify the behavior, the dynamic of the, uh, the biological network. So how we perform this? So we start here is a free uh, CPG. So this is artificial device from the FPGA. So we choose different frequency of CPG because uh, so like that we can uh, choose uh, which are the one was the best to modify the activity. And then we do first some open loop experiment. So here from zero to 60, the 60 electrodes so that you have in the MEA, usually you have 64 MEA, uh, 64 electrodes in the MEA. And here are the artificial CPG. And what we are doing is that if we detect one biological activity, we send inhibition to our CPG. So that's what you see here. We have activity in biological. We send inhibition thanks to the synapses from the biological network to the artificial network. And we see that our CPG are stopping during one science period. So this is just open loop. When there is biological activity, we inhibate the artificial device. So I can show you just in a bit video. So it's, uh, as it's not published, uh, it's just uh, not very uh, high. But you can see here in green is artificial network. In, in pink is a biological activity. And when we have the biological activity, it stop, uh, we inhibit the, uh, the artificial activity. So this is just to a bit check, check the setup because it's not so interesting. But the very interesting part is when we close the loop. So that means that when we have a biological activity, so we inhibit the uh, artificial network, but when the artificial network have one activity, we stimulate the biological activity. And what was very interesting, that in fact, uh, at the beginning, there is completely two independent uh, activity from the artificial one and the biological one. And after 20 seconds, they converge to one dynamic. And you can see here, they converge to one periodic dynamic. And this period is not the same as the CPG. And we can tune this period, changing the weight of the synapses between the, between the experiment. So we'll show you here. So in the video, so this is after 30 seconds of experiment. And you can see that the artificial and the biological are completely synchronized. So we succeed to synchronize the biological activity and the artificial activity and from one uh, specific period. So it could be interesting also to create uh, some biological CPG and to modify this if you want to make some uh, bio algorithm uh, robot, for instance, also. or to create your own pacemaker or your, your brief uh, system. So there, there, there are a lot of applications if we succeed to, to do this synchronization. And so another part of closed loop uh, system. So it's uh, the one that we uh, designed uh, recently. So it was in the scientific uh, paper, uh, scientific report paper, sorry, uh, this year. So we use a SPAC in your networks in FPGA, but instead of using electrical stimulation, this uh, dynamic of artificial network, we uh, convert it in image. So when you have uh, you have a 64 image, 64 uh, square, and each square represents one neuron. One is white, that means that there is activity. If there is no activity, it's black. And so like that, we send some image. We use a video projector, the normal one, but if I we modify it inside and we uh, we put some laser inside, so like that we can directly stimulate the microscope here when there is neuronal culture. And this neuron culture, we modify a bit genetically. So we, uh, we put a virus, so like that, they are light sensitive. So from the image of the dynamic of the artificial network, we send some stimulation, some optical stimulation, so optogenetic stimulation on neurons. And then we record by uh, some uh, uh, MEA uh, recording. And also by calcium imaging. So like that, we can correlate and be sure that uh, the result that we have uh, is uh, it's a good one. So just to show you, this is the activity of the artificial network. So I don't know why it's uh, turning uh, not as good. Of it. And here is a stimulation, optical stimulation that we put on the neuronal culture. So you can see the electrode uh, below so for the recording, and uh, you can see a bit the neurons that uh, there is on the on the neuronal culture, and we stimulate depending on the pattern created by the artificial network. And in fact, what we uh, succeed to do is that there is also some synchronization. And we modify the biological activity and begin to synchronize with the artificial dynamic. 
And then the last part is to use also uh, some, uh, so still some viable experiment by using other, another kind of uh, journal culture. So using some brain organoid. So uh, it's uh, these brain organoids are designed from a human stem cell and it's uh, designed at the University of Tokyo from uh, Professor Ikeuchi. And what we did is uh, to send some uh, CPG stimulation to the organoid. So we have two organoids. And so like that to check if they can succeed to answer and also to replicate this activity. So before they have independent activity and we try to train them to, to replicate this uh, oscillation activity. And so here you have, uh, so you can see here and by fluorescence, you can see that have simulation, there is uh, uh, oscillation pattern that uh, appears to this organoid. So I will put again the video to so that like that you can show, show, uh, see better. So it's this part I can see. And the stimulation is, do, is made by here and the signal is transmitted from this organoid to the other organoid and you have the oscillation um, pattern. And the last part also is to try to improve also the interface between the biological and physics because usually, as uh, I show you, we use a microelectrode array for interfacing. So now we use a bit optogenetic because it's better for the spatial resolution and also the speed of the stimulation. But what we are trying to create also is some artificial synapses thanks to microfluidic techniques. So in fact, the spiking neural network, the in FPGA, so in electronic is controlling some pneumatic channel. And this pneumatic channel, uh, thanks to some quake valve, so quake valve is some, uh, some uh, uh, valve to close the channel. And so like that, we can send some neurotransmitter inside the culture. So like that, we do some ionic microstimulation controlled by the artificial network, and we check on the neural culture if we can see the difference of dynamic. What is quite uh, important with this device is that you can do some excitation, but you can also do some inhibition. Because using microelectrode array, you couldn't do really inhibition. You can do inhibition only if you stimulate a lot. And so like that, you, uh, you make the, the tired of the synapses and the synapses don't answer anymore. So like that, you can inhibit. By optogenetic, you can inhibit. So it's quite good also by uh, optogenetic. But using this, you can choose which neurotransmitter you want to send, and it's controlled by the artificial device. So now I will uh, conclude on this system. So in fact, we uh, succeed to make the, this goal to, to make some uh, communication between some spiking neural network and some biological uh, neurons. So there is a lot of work still to do because we have to improve all the experiments that uh, I show you about the spinal cord, about the replacement, about the change of dynamic. So it's a preliminary result, well, quite interesting, but we have still to, to progress on it and to design a good neural processes that could be used for the future. And so I think also the biorobit robotic is a good way and to use also the biological dynamic if you can modify and control it also to try to do some artificial intelligence thanks to this. So about uh, the, the perspective, so first uh, the result of the spiking neural network. So we designed a lot of spiking neural network with different models. So like that, depending on the application, if you need a very complex model or simple model, so you can choose which is packing neural network you want to use. We add some biometric option like the plasticity, the noise, the axonal delay, and the methodology is always to validate from software and then from biological data. And the main step to work on this packing neural network is to work also on the tuning of parameters because it's very not easy. And also even neuroscientists don't really know exactly how to work even one neuron to one other neurons. So we try to do some uh, reconstruction of topology of biological neurons. So trying to force them to some specific network and like that to make some single cell recording and try to replicate this by artificial neurons. So like that we can tune at the best and to understand a bit better how works the uh, real biological neurons. And this work is uh, to use for uh, emulate and trying to understand the neural disease model. And then if you understand how it's changed, for instance, if you have issue of ionic channel, if you have issue of frequency of bursting of spontaneous, you can uh, send some adaptive stimulation thanks to the, this uh, uh, biometric neural network to try to inhibit this activity and coming back to the healthy neurons. 
And the last part, I think it's quite uh, interesting to explore, is to try to do some artificial intelligence, but using IBTSM. So to use the, the advantages of artificial intelligence, especially the learning uh, algorithm and the high speed um, patterning, but also to use logical recording to do some uh, free processing of data. Because you already have one intelligence in uh, your logical uh, cells, and you can use them like a reservoir computing. And then sending some simulation, you can make some learning about it and trying to use it after to, to mix them with a brain morphic algorithm. So I would like to thank, uh, so these are the PhDs that work on this project. So I would like to thank them. These are my colleagues at the University of Bordeaux. Here are my colleagues at the University of Tokyo. And here are my uh, three colleagues from the UPenn project. And also Professor Asler from Georgia Tech uh, that we have some collaboration together. And some uh, people here who work on macrophytic and nano electrode array. So we use also not macro electrode array anymore, but nano electrode array. So like that, you have a very single cell recording and single cell simulation. And all my members of uh, labs and, and university. So thank you very much. And uh, don't hesitate if, if you have any questions. So please free to ask questions. We have like uh, at least 10 minutes uh, left for any questions. So I have a question. Uh, I was wondering, did you investigate like uh, the effect of neuromodulation on your uh, spiking neural network, like the digital one, like for example, by just that changing like those. So is there any uh, question of the spiking neural network or some uh, bio-hybrid uh, system or application or how we do the interface? Uh, yeah, for interface, like when you're doing bio-hybrid or even just on their on their own, like just by modifying the, the conductances, like all the conductances at once to try to mimic like uh, neuro neuromodulatory effects on, uh, on your networks. Do you know what I mean or? Just the I, I mean, did you, did you try to change the, the try to mimic normalization on the spiking neural network uh, part? I don't think he can hear you, Fred. No, I'm, I'm, I was wondering. Can you hear us, Timothy? I don't think you can hear me. Timothy, can you hear us? Can you hear me, uh, Timothy? Yeah, sorry, I uh, didn't hear anything. Uh, oh, yeah, sorry. Uh, to just, uh, I was wondering if you if you tried to uh, mimic neuromodulation in uh, on the spiking neural networks. Yeah. So in fact, so we begin to start with it. So we don't have a result yet about it, but we we try to do some neuromodulation. Uh, so we do some simulation just on single cell, but we try also to send the network stimulation, so uh, neuromodulation thanks to some uh, brain morphic algorithm. So in fact, we will have the, our spiking neural network working, but in parallel, we have also one brain morphic algorithm uh, working about the neural modulation. And then we uh, decided that it's a good time to send the, uh, the award to the logical network, so we would send the stimulation. And this stimulation could be sent through the macrophytic system. Yeah, yeah, okay. So I'm sorry because in fact, uh, yeah, my sound was cut, so I didn't hear anything. I don't know if you speak to me the last uh, 15 or 20 minutes uh, before. No, no, I was just asking that question uh, two or three times, but like before, like no one was asking. No worries. <laughs> okay, so sorry about it. No worries. Does there are there other questions? I have one question. Ah, uh, yes, please. Yeah, Timothy, a very nice talk. Uh, I'd like to ask you. In the beginning, you show very impressive a uh, fit of the line shape of the neural activity. Uh, I wonder, uh, is that a quality, high quality fit important for the later part in your talk when you excite uh, networks or just a simplified line shape will do as well? 
Um, so j uh, could you just uh, repeat so I uh, yeah. yeah, just like my, my question is in the beginning, you show very nice uh, fit of the line shapes yeah. of yeah, the yeah. of the spikes. Yeah. And in the later part of the of the talk, you show how one uh, you can excite from from outside a, a neural network. I was wondering if you need that, if you require that level of uh, high quality fit to do that or simplified activities will also do it. Yeah, so it's a very good question. So in fact, we don't have yet the answer. So I think for me, uh, my thing is that I think we need this uh, this mimic for the stimulation also part. So the, the good fit of shape is used for the neural network inside for the signal processing. So for the experiment that I show you, for example, for the European project, we just use a pulse stimulation. We don't use the shape of the neurons to send the stimulation. But in some recent uh, work that we are doing, so we send exactly the shape of neurons or the shape of synapses, because it's more the shape of synapses after that you have. And it seems that the biological uh, neurons are more ans uh, answering to this kind of stimulation than uh, just uh, normal pulse, biphasic pulse that you with, uh, usually we use. So I think the shape is, will be uh, important for um, to, to make the biological network more re responding. Okay, thank you. Hi, great talk and um, fascinating research. I had a question about optimization and um, in particular, are all of the parameters in the artificial part of networks tunable? And um, to have you, have you explored optimization online during biohybrid experiments, especially replacement experiments, in which, for example, you might have a pattern of activity in the, the whole system that would be your target, and you'd want to tune the parameters you have control over to, to optimize that pattern of the full network. Yeah, so also the other question is exactly what we try to do now because uh, so the optimization algorithm that we use is more for the initial condition. So it's, it requires it's doing for on PC, it requires a long time. So we couldn't use it online. But what we are trying to do, so if it's simple pattern, so just sending the, the burst activity or stimulation, as we have the library, the library of neural network, we can change it directly in real time. So we can uh, we can change the neural network implanted in FPGA in real time. So this could be done. But if you want to really tune the parameters online during the experiment, and if we see, for instance, in a disease like uh, neurons, that you can see a change of dynamic, and you want to replicate this change of dynamic, you need an optimization algorithm that can be performed online. So we are working on it, especially one, uh, with one professor at University of Tokyo who is a specialist in uh, optimization uh, algorithm. And we try to implement this algorithm in FPGA. And so like that, we could have uh, this, uh, this computation uh, try in real time. So we, uh, the result from now that if we just have the optimization algorithm, it takes uh, 0 0.1 second, something like that. So it's still a bit too long because it's, uh, it's not at a millisecond level. It's more at 100 milliseconds, so it's a level. So we need to, to reduce it a bit. Even if the uh, online tuning, you don't need to do it every time. So you just have to do a bit uh, when you see some difference and we, when you want to make a, like a pattern recognition and to, to change this and to modify in your artificial network to, to send the adaptive estimation. So it could be, I think, possible, but uh, more in the next year, not yet, because uh, it requires some time to implement uh, optimization algorithm in FPGA, because uh, FPGA implementation is not so uh, easy to do. Great, thanks. Exciting avenue. Yeah, yeah, yeah. there is a lot of uh, work <laughs> to do. Hi, uh, I have a question. Thanks for the nice talk and uh, very interesting research. Uh, I was wondering when you when you implement the uh, hybrid experiments, how how did you give the feedback to the biological neurons? Did you use uh, like voltage stimulation or current stimulation? 
Yeah, so uh, this is uh, so in the result that I show you, for instance, for the replacement experiment. So we use some uh, commercial simulator. So it sends some uh, current simulation. So you so can it's current, current stimulation. Current stimulation, yeah. So uh, you're using the simulator from uh, multi channel systems? Yeah, for the uh, Brainbow project, we use uh, this uh, stimulator, the MCS stimulator. For the optogenetic stimulation, we send by uh, laser. So it's a laser stimulation. So we, uh, you stimulate by uh, light sensitive neurons. And uh, for the macrophidic, you send some uh, ionic uh, fluid. So, so in fact, you directly send some neurotransmitter. So like that, it's not electrical, it's not optical, it's a chemical stimulation. But uh, at the micro level, so we just send some microliter, even very few microliter. So like that, you have uh, not a network stimulation, but just uh, some few neurons um, who are stimulated or inhibiting. And uh, in Tokyo, we have another system. It's not MCS, it's an Alpha Med system. So it's from uh, Panasonic. And in that case, uh, it's also current stimulation. I see. So for the current stimulation, um, do you, what's the spatial resolution for the uh, it depends on the size of the electrode. So if you use MEA, so usually the size is 10 micro by 10 micro. So it's it's a bit big. So usually you don't simulate just one neuron. You stimulate three or four neurons if you have a, not a very high density network. Uh, but I'm working with Professor Guillaume Larieux, so he's from Toulouse, and he developed some uh, nanowire, silicon uh, nanowire. So like that, you have some uh, nano electrode array. And in that case, this nanowire is going a bit even inside the neurons. So you can really make some uh, single stimulation neuron. And also for the recording, so usually using MEA and the MCS system, for instance, for neurons, you have around uh, 50, 100 microvolt of amplitude for the biological signal. And using NEA, you can uh, achieve millivolt resolution. So uh, nearly like intracellular uh, resolution. So when you say the resolution is the recording resolution or stimulation? The recording stimulation, but also the stimulation because uh, the stimulation as uh, the nanowire is nearly inside the neurons. When you send the stimulation, you directly stimulate just one neuron and not the other one. I see. So how 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 did you um make sure the nanowire is in penetrated into the neurons? So uh, in fact, uh, they see that there is a bit of uh, electrophoresis. So uh, there is uh, the neuron will go a bit inside the, for the nanowire go a bit inside the, the neurons, but without uh, damaging it. And then it's just at the end of the experiment, if you make after some uh, microscope uh, of a techniques to see uh, where exactly, uh, where the neural network on it. Because the drawback of this nano electrode array that is not transparent. So, transparent, so you can see your biological network where they are, but with any, you couldn't see it. So you, you, you don't, we, we don't need any like electroporation to make the intracellular access. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because we, uh, we don't have the intracellular resolution. So we are not, uh, we are not at the 60 millivolt or like that. We are just at uh, two or three millivolt at maximum but it's still uh, 100 higher or 200 higher compared to MEA. So there is uh, some good quality of signal and especially for neurological uh, disease, uh, there is very, just a few modification of the, of the template. So it could be interesting to, to get this. Okay, thank you very much. So is there any one last questions or otherwise we're going to close? Uh, no. So thank you again, Timothy, for uh, the nice talk. Hey, thank and you very much for, yeah, for, for inviting me for this talk. And uh, if you have any question, please uh, contact me by email. So, and I will uh, be happy to answer or if you have uh, some idea of collaboration, I'm uh, open also. Thank you very we much. Will. Thank you. All right, thank you everyone.